Hello everyone. Today we will discuss some important concepts related to numericals from Lensmaker's formula. So as we know that what is Lensmaker's formula? Lensmaker's formula is a formula which relates the focal length with the refractive index of the material which is used for making the lens and the radii of curvature of the two surfaces where the refraction is taking place. So what is the formula? Right? Or we had used N symbol for the refractive index. So in that case, it will be written like this. So this is the focal length of the lens when the lens is made of glass and it is placed in air. So you can visualize it like this. That this is the lens which is made of glass and it is kept in air. So Na is the refractive index of air and Ng is the refractive index of glass. Then in that case Ng with respect to A can be written as Ng upon Na and we know that refractive index of air or vacuum is considered as 1. Therefore, a and G can simply be written as N. So, in some books you will find it written like this. Like this. That means the lens is kept in air. There are many conceptuals based on this thing. So, you need to remember this, that this can be written as Ng upon Na, right? So, this is a lens maker's formula. Now, from here, we have to find some important points. So, those important points I will discuss starting with the sign convention for the radii of curvature. So, sign conventions, first we are taking the convex lens and then we will take the concave lens. So, if we are talking about convex lens, this is convex lens and if we are talking about this, then we know that this is the first refracting surface. And this is the second refracting surface, right? Here, this is the first refracting surface and here this is the second refracting surface. Now, for this, for first refracting surface, the radius of curvature will be considered as R1. So, we can say that this is R1 and this side is R2. Radii of curvature in this case, for this space is obviously R1. And this side radii is R2 because this is the second refracting surface. So, what about the sign convention for R1 and R2? In this case, the radii of curvature for this curvature will be somewhere here. So, I can say that incident ray is coming this way and this, that, this will be measured from the optical center. So, this will be in the same direction. So, R1 is positive, right? If we talk about R2, R2 will be the center will be here. For second phase, so you can say that this direction will be measured 
obviously from the optical center. So, in this case, this direction is opposite to the incident ray. So, R2 is negative, right? If we consider the case of concave, the radii of curvature for this is and this is the center for second. So, for first the direction for measuring it will be from optical center. So, this will be the direction for measuring this and this is incident ray. In this case the direction for measuring will be from optical center obviously. So, this will be this way. So, here this is same direction. So, I can say that R1 is negative and R2 that means the radii of curvature for the second phase is positive. This is very very important but when we are solving the numericals based on this concept. Then we have the focal length when this lens is dipped in any medium or for example, let us take an example of any liquid. So, we can write, this is the second point I am writing, when the lens is dipped in a liquid. Then what will happen? The focal length of the lens in air will be n g with respect to air minus 1, 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r2. And the focal length of the lens in liquid will be material with respect to liquid minus 1 and this is the same lens. So, this will remain the same. So, if we mark these two equations as 1 and 2, right? So, 1 divided by 2 will give me 1 upon F A upon 1 upon F L is equal to A and G minus 1 1 upon R1 minus 1 upon R2 upon this quantity L and G minus 1, 1 upon R1 minus 1 upon R2, right? So, this part will be cancelled. So, this will be solved here and FL upon FA. That means focal length of the lens in liquid upon focal length of the lens in air <coughs> is equal to refractive index of glass with respect to air. This can be written as Na upon Ng upon Na minus 1 upon this can be written as Ng upon Nl minus 1. So, we know that refractive index of air is 1. So, there is no need to solve it further. This is Ng minus 1 upon and g upon n l. I am taking the LCM in the denominator. So, this is n l and g minus n l. So, this on solving will come out to be n l and g minus 1 upon and G minus and L. Now, here the two cases can be discussed when the environment, see here the environment is air, right? Here the environment is air, the lens is in air. Now, this lens is in liquid, right? So, we can Depending on the refractive index of the liquid, the behavior of the lens will change. So, we will discuss this as cases, case 1 and case 
2. So, if we solve it as case 1, that means if refractive index of liquid is greater than refractive index of the material of the lens. Here in this case, this is glass. So, if NL, that means environment, refractive index is greater than the material refractive index from which the lens is made. So, if this is the case, look at this equation. If I mark this as equation 3, if N L is greater, the denominator will be negative, right? And this will be positive quantity because this will be greater than 1. So, here this will come out to be from 3, F L upon F A is negative quantity. Therefore, F L is negative. That means whatever the nature of the lens was there in air, the nature will reverse inside the liquid. So, what does it mean? We know that if we had taken convex lens, so we can write convex behaves as concave and if it would have been concave then concave will behave as convex the behavior will reverse <coughs> right so this is the first case when the environment refractive index is greater than the material refractive index now let's check the case when environment refractive index we can draw a diagram also here <clears throat> so that means if a concave lens is there and this is n g and this is n l we are talking about this is denser and this is rarer comparable to comparative to this so what will happen its behavior will change so if the parallel rays are coming here the no natural nature of convex lens is converging but its nature is changing when it is kept in a liquid whose refractive index is greater. So, I can write an L here is greater than an G, right? And if this is the case for concave lens, what will happen? The parallel rays, though the natural nature of concave lens is diverging but it will converge because its nature will change when it is kept in a liquid whose refractive index is greater than the refractive index of the material of the lens. So, this is the first case. Second case for discussing the second case, I will have to rub the board. So, for case 2, we are taking N L is less than N G. So, what will happen from 3, F L upon F A is equal to Look at 3. Here we are saying that and G is greater. So, the denominator will be positive and this is already positive. So, this will come out to be positive. Therefore, F L is equal to 
positive quantity. What does that mean? That the nature of lens will not change. What does that mean? Convex will remain convex. And concave behaves as concave. So what does that mean? If I draw this diagram, Right, so environment is having less refractive index, so it will behave in the same way. So, its natural behavior is converging, so it will be a converging lens. Now, here also, since Ng is greater than Nl, that means the environment is having less refractive index, <coughs> so its nature will also not change, it will remain diverging. Right, and in case the refractive indices are same, what will happen? Neither divergence nor convergence, it will go undeviated. Now, let us mention that case also. So, here and G is equal to N L, here also N G is equal to N L. So, what will happen? It will go undeviated. So, what is the conclusion here that in case this is same, the refractive indices are same, then it will behave as a plane slab. Now the next point will clear that why is the radius of curvature not equal to twice of focal length in case of lenses. So let us check that if we take the case of equi by convex lens, what does that mean? The radius of curvature is same that means this is R1. First phase R1, second phase R2. So, R1 is positive as we have discussed. R2 is negative and this R1 is equal to R2 is equal to R. Right? So, let us find its focal length. 1 by F is equal to N minus 1 when it is of glass or any material placed in air and this is 1 by R1, R1 is plus R minus 1 by R2, R2 is minus R. Right? So, let us solve it 1 by F is equal to N minus 1 and this is 1 by R plus 1 by R, right? This gives me N minus 1 and 2 upon R. Now, for glass, what is the value of N? N is 1.5, right? So, we can find 1 by F is equal to 1.5 minus 1 and 2 upon R. R, right. So, we can write this F is equal to R upon 0 0.5 into 2 because this is 0 0.5 and this is 2.5 into 2 here. So, cross multiplication will give us this result R upon <coughs> 1 that means R. So, here R is equal to F. 
So it is very much clearly visible that focal length is not equal to radius of curvature in case of lenses. That's why we don't write R as 2F, right? Next important point is that when we cut a lens, for example, convex lens in vertical two parts, This is equi by convex. So, what does that mean? That means we have cut this in these two parts, and therefore, one part will be this and the other part will be this and this question is often asked that what will be the focal length of each half we will just check and then we'll write the result over here so we know that r1 is plus r right we are taking this piece so what will be the r2 in this case this is r1 this is r2 right so r1 is plus r and r2 is actually infinity for this phase r2 is infinity right so if we write the formula 1 by f is equal to n minus 1 1 by r minus 1 by infinity right if we write it this will be 0 and if you want to consider it on left side then you can write even minus also but that is not going to make any difference n minus 1 upon r because 1 by infinity is 0 so if it is of glass for glass and g is equal to 1.5 so, 1 by f is equal to 1.5 minus 1 upon r. That means 0 0.5 upon r. So, therefore, focal length is equal to r upon 0 0.5. That means twice of radius of curvature. Right, and we know that for equi by convex lens, the radius of curvature is equal to focal length. So, we can write here third point F is equal to R. So, therefore, F dash, if we mark this as F dash, this will be twice of the original focal length. So, F mu is equal to twice of original focal length right now we can discuss the last part of this topic <coughs> we know that refractive index is a function of wavelength it depends on wavelength so how we know that by Cauchy's relation, it is proportional to 1 by lambda square. So, from lens maker's formula, 1 by f is equal to n minus 1, 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. So, from here you can see easily that focal length is inversely proportional to refractive index. And refractive index is inversely proportional to wavelength. So, you can say that focal length is directly proportional to wavelength. Right? So, there is a direct proportionality. That means we can discuss a case if violet light is 
replaced by red what will be the effect on focal length we know that in whip gear the focal length increases this way right so that means violet has less wavelength and red has more wavelength right so less wavelength less focal length more wavelength more focal length so if we replace violet by red what will be the case for converging so if violet would was here the convergence is here so if red is taken the convergence is right <coughs> here right so this is all about your important concepts which are related to the lens makers formula right that's all for now have a nice day